Hello to you folks on this lovely holiday, rainy holiday week. Uh, if you're out here on the East Bay, it, is it just me or is this music really happy? It might just be me because I've got quite a bit of time off to just focus on bikes. So uh, with that, let's talk about bikes. In this video, we be notching chainstays, that is. But before we get into that, we need to uh, set up the final section of the jig, the dropouts. We'll use the top of the spine as our reference line and measure down from there to the bottom bracket center. We'll use that measurement to find the difference between it and the axle line. And here you can see I've marked the sticky note where the bottom bracket center is. I'm using the drawing to mark the axle line onto the sticky note. The axle fixture is too low, so I need to move it up. Now I'm centering the axle. Uh, axle is 120 millimeters and my fixture just happens to be 40 millimeters wide. So we're looking at 40, 40, 40. Here I'm using my digital angle gauge to zero the dropouts. And uh, finally I need to position the dropout distance from the bottom bracket. This was, uh, this kind of broke my mind and for some reason I measured the dummy axle center with the dropout fixtured to it. Uh, what I should have done is measured the inside of the dropout and then use that as a reference for the measurement. But uh, lucky for me there was only about 1 16th inch difference. Here I'm adjusting the distance to the final resting place. I thought it would be a good idea to mark the position just in case I need to move the fixture later on. So while my mind was on making references, I thought I should uh, do the same for the axle center. If you do a Google search for dummy axle, you'll find that nearly all the results are axles with um, turned down smaller center diameter. Uh, due to my inexperience, I didn't have the foresight to do this. Uh, I thought about turning down the center on my axle, uh, but because of the way I originally made the axle, I know that my screw holes are not concentric with the outer diameter of the axle. So uh, anyway, long story short, turning down the center at this stage is not an option. So I decided to make a collar that will clamp around the axle and act as a stop. And here we are. So now if I need to remove the axle for whatever reason, I can put it back on quickly. Here I'm measuring the chainstay angles for mitering and notching. To make these cuts, I'll use the mill and a slitting saw, but I need a way to hold the chainstays. I decided to make a wood block from this chair someone had thrown in the trash. I was kind of rushing because it was slightly raining and in my haste I made my center cut with the grain instead of against the grain. And of course uh, it broke when I tightened the vise on it. So I thought screw it, time to do this right and I made this V-block fixture off camera. Okay, my wood cutting adventures are not over. Oh, by the way, if you ever make a vice stand, uh, 
uh, don't give it four legs give it three or a circular base here I am making another set of blocks to hold the chainstay in the vise While the saw was still in the mill, I went ahead and notched the other chainstay. And now mitering. Now for the weird looking chainstay, I decided to try the whole saw on this. I made the cut slowly and it came out great. checking my cut and uh, it needs to go a bit deeper however I messed up here because I need to cut the tab so its orientation is better suited for a negative bottom bracket drop I should have made this cut a long time ago uh, maybe at the time I was drawing up the frame plans and uh, a quick side note the dropout didn't want to cut. I figured out that the laser cut edge was harder so I ground it down and then made my cut on the bandsaw. Still a bit too snug so more filing and that seems pretty good. Now for the other chainstay and it's kind of fits except that the bottom bracket side is biased uh, too far out you can see me pushing it toward the mark I made for where it should be so a bit more filing and that did the trick but I ended up with the cut being too deep especially on the bottom so I'll need to fill those when it's time for welding now it's time to shape the tabs to the chainstays. And after all that jazz, I ended up with these. The top tabs still need to be shaped out, but I'll do those when I start the um, seat stays. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, uh, I won't ask. You guys know what's up. So I guess in the next video, we'll cap and tack these chainstays. Please join me for that, and I'll see you guys later.